Here we go. Three, two, one. It's time for Clubhouse Chatter. Here's Norm Ordez. And I have a special co-host, old friend Judah Newby of 750 The Game out of Portland. Judah, how you doing? Norm, I am good. It's good to be with you, man. It's, Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. It's been a long time. It's been a minute, yeah. It's, it's been, been a, a minute. Yeah. So Judah and I, we used to work together with the McMinnville Parks and Recreation. He used to umpire some games together. Oh, yeah. And then I also used to umpire his games when he was a wee guy, seven, eight years old. Yeah, I made and life so, difficult on you back then. <laughs> yeah, you are actually one of the easier ones. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was, it was my friends and their dads that would uh, that would cause all the trouble. So our our uh, guest is Daniel Doc Jacobs, and if you haven't heard about this man, this is a story that you're going to want to hear. Um, I know Doc will tell you otherwise, but he is an American badass, and um, I would like first of all, I'd like to dedicate this show to all of our armed forces uh, members, men and women. Um, dedicate this to my uh, father who passed away in March, uh, who was uh, served 20 years in the United States Army. So, Doc, how you doing? Uh, doing pretty good. How are you gents today? We're doing pretty good. And so, so tell us a little bit about your story. So, you are you are a Navy veteran. Yes, yes. And uh, I just want to say uh, sorry for your loss, uh, your father and his, uh, his service and your family's uh, sacrifice during his time of service. Well, thank you. Uh, greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Uh, well, trust me, I'd go back and do it all over again. And that's that's what I hear. You know. Um, yeah. You, sir, are an inspiration, and uh, I've been following your story probably for the last couple of months. I've been trying to, you know, get a time for you to come on, and uh, we've been kind of a hit and miss. And I. Um, I heard about you first, I believe it was the Huffington Post, and then you were on ESPN as well. And uh, tell us a little bit about your story. Uh, well, first of all, I um, just want to say thanks for having me on the show. And uh, I I joined the military right out of high school. Um, I could have gone and played college ball. Um, I mean, I didn't really have any offers or anything, but... You know, I played uh, high school ball, and I knew that I could go on and play college ball, but uh, serving in the military was kind of a family tradition, family heritage, and I uh, just wanted to continue that and uh, just kind of do my thing and do the, the college thing afterwards and pursue baseball after. And, I mean, it's, it's been a pretty pretty crazy road, but um, I was I went through my year of training and got deployed, so I ran right away. Um I went over as a as a line corpsman, which is you know, I guess uh, common terms for people who don't know the military would be a uh, a medic with the infantry for the Marine Corps. And uh, six and a half months into my time overseas, um, I was hit, and uh, just kind of a, a brief history from there. I did uh, two years of physical rehabilitation. The, the government and the military allowed me a. Uh, it's supposed to only be 18 months, but they'll give you an extension for another six months if they feel that you can recoup and get better and uh, return to service. And so they gave me that extra six months, and um, I returned to service. And from the moment that I was hit until the time I exited the, the Navy, uh, I served another six and a half years. And then uh, I was kind of sitting around, sort of my thumbs, wondering why I got out, um, you know, because I was pretty good at what I did. And I, you know, love what I did. I love my Marines, love, uh, you know, taking care of our troops, uh, no matter what branch they are. And then I met uh, Tommy Lasorda at a veterans, uh, veterans day event. And that's how uh, my my pursuit of the pros kind of got re reignited was when I met him. And he uh, so graciously offered me uh, a trial with the Dodgers. So ever since then, it's been uh, pure love for the game again. And, uh, a lot of uh, training and getting getting back at it pretty hard. What was your What was your first impression of Tommy? My what? Your first impression of Tommy. What'd you think? Oh, uh, the first thing that I I realized is he's a hilarious hilarious guy, and um, you know, but he he's a very very personable uh, personal gentleman, and 
you know, even though he's uh, very busy, he he makes time to to make you feel like you're uh, like you have a hundred percent of his time and it's his attention. And I mean, ever since then, his uh, him and his wife have been uh, very very uh, they blessed me with their time and um, you know by continuously following up with me, and making sure that I'm uh, sticking with it and everything. And um, you know, I just want to say thank you to them and the doctors' organization as well. Doc, what was that conversation like with Tommy? What did he say to you that inspired you to, to re-pursue this passion? What was the content of that conversation? Um, well, I was introduced to him as a uh, wounded warrior um, uh, baseball player, which, you know, I I was uh, doing some stuff for my organization, uh, Best Sports, and um, we uh, have a national softball team, a regional softball team throughout the nation and stuff, and uh, somebody just, and I wanted to introduce me as a intro the there at the common ground so it wouldn't be kind of awkward, you know? And so um, he was like, oh, oh, you play baseball. Okay, well, uh, can you hit a baseball? And he said, yes, sir, I can. He said, what's the fastest he's ever hit? And I said, I can get a piece of a 92 monitor fastball in high school. And he <laughs> said, oh, okay, you want to come try it for the Dodgers? I'm like, yeah, oh, absolutely. So, I mean, it was it was kind of kind of weird because I was so giddy inside because right. like, Tommy was sort of the legend and offered me a trial for the Dodgers but yet I had to still present myself as a professional and not so giddy and like a little child so then I ran outside after he gave me his, his business card I ran outside and I called my dad right away uh-huh. said, you're not going to believe what I just talked to you you're not going to believe what happened my dad was like calm down it's okay and I'm like no it's not okay you gotta listen to me <laughs> you're like the Dodgers need another left handed bat dad I'm the guy <laughs> yeah they need a they need a five ten first first baseman with a left handed bat <laughs> <laughs> so my my Tommy story is is along the same you know about the giddiness and so I was clubhouse manager for the Lancaster Jethawks in 2006 our manager was Brett Butler former Dodger, good friend with uh, Tommy Lasorda. And so I remember Tommy would come to uh, the hangar there in Lancaster and he would hang out with us. And so we actually went out for dinner with him. And so a couple of things I've learned about Tommy. Tommy is very loyal. Yeah. He, he will love you till the day you die. Very hilarious guy. But if you get on Tommy's bad side, oof, man, I'll tell you what. <laughs> and he will never pay for a dinner. Oh, well, that sounds like yeah, Tommy. <laughs> yeah. But um, had an Italian dinner with Tommy. It was it was great um, just sitting and listening to the stories. And I was just like you, you know, except I didn't get the business card. But I did go out and talk to my dad, and I told him about my experience. And he was just like your dad, you know, hey, just mellow out. It's just a guy. And I'm like, you don't understand. It's Tommy freaking Lasorda. Yeah. You know? And so... So now, so your trial, so you tried out with the Dodgers, and uh, yeah. how, how did that go? Um, I made it to the second final round, and um, I, honestly, I didn't have a whole lot of time to train and uh, whatnot beforehand, and uh, I got running up on a uh, on a curveball in the outside corner in the simulated game, and, uh, you know, which I, I made it to the second final round, you know, but my defense was excellent. And um, I didn't get signed, but um, I figured, you know what, I'll, I'll give it another go. I'll talk to some other teams. And since then, I've had uh, five total tryouts. And uh, some some other teams that have been uh, gracious enough to have me out. Um, I want to say thanks to uh, the Detroit Tigers for having me out this year, the uh, Chicago White Sox twice. And uh, their scouts are really, really awesome folks. And uh, the Milwaukee Brewers. And uh, with every tryout, I learn more and more of the, kind of what I'm doing wrong, what I need to do, and I'm improving. And uh, a lot of the scouts are very open if you ask them, you know, hey, what, what are you guys looking for? Like, where, where do I need to be? And, you know, they're, they're very open and they're very, um, very giving with their, their opinions. And um, I just want to say thank you to all of them as well. And it's, it's, it's going. And I'm uh, currently working with the, my hitting coach and my, uh, my speed agility coach, my strength training coaches as well, and um, I think I'm going to go there too. So. so growing up as a little doc, who who were your inspirations? I mean, who did you have a favorite team? Did you have a favorite player? Uh, my favorite team still is uh, the Cleveland Indians. Attaboy. I'm a diehard Tribes fan. 
So growing up, I used to love watching Kenny Lawson steal bases like crazy. <laughs> Jim Tomey crushing monsters, home runs. Manny Ramirez doing the same thing. Omar Vizquel and his crazy, awesome uh, infield uh, plays. A uh, good friend of mine, John McDonald, um, and him doing the same thing as he filled the infielder throughout all the way baseball. Um, I mean, just all of that awesomeness, you know, Oral Hirsch has a pitching with the Indians, um, and Bartolo Colon, some of the, the greatest, you know, times of the 90s were, uh, you know, growing up was as an Indian fan and just watching these guys just, you know, destroy teams and destroy baseballs and, you know, the Robbie Alomar and uh, Omar Vizquel double play combo is just amazing, you know. So, that I mean, I used to look up to a lot of those guys growing up and, you know, just another thing is having the double A team right in Akron, which is 45 minutes away from Cleveland. So, yep. growing up, you go to the, uh, like, I, I watched Manny Ramirez grow up in the, the Indians organization and then Jim Tony and, you know, Bartolo Colon, and Manny Ramirez, all these guys, and then watching them play double A ball and how awesome they are with the fans. And it was just some awesome stuff. So, you know, but then, and watching just any of those guys, and Glavin, Smoltz, uh, Todd Hollandsworth, all those guys, you know, it's just awesome to watch those guys. And then now, you know, you get, you have like the Bryce Harper, and it's just still such a fun game to watch and be a part of. Yeah, Doc, I was going to ask you, your story is so inspiring. Have you been able to get in contact with any of the other major leaguers that are out in the uh, in MLB right now, and have they reached out to you, and have they expressed uh, interest in your story and just inspiration? I mean, it's impossible not to be inspired uh, by what we hear. Have you been able to get any feedback from them? Uh, some, some of it. Um uh, I mean, it's kind of hard to break into the MLB, you know, organization as a whole. And, I mean, just to even get a, a workout with these guys and just hit the gym and inspire them is, is pretty tough. But um, I met some of the guys. Uh, Barry Vito runs an organization called Strikeout for Troops. And, you know, I met him, and he's very inspirational. And uh, I talked to his, uh, his uh, helper, uh, Jake PV is an inspiration too, and he does a lot of stuff with the, the guys. And, you know, I'll talk baseball with him, Mark Cotte, uh, Brad Ziegler, Javi Lopez, you know, all those guys. And I, I keep in touch with Cotte pretty good. But, uh, one of my buddies, uh, Justin Spire, he played 13 years pro ball, and he, uh, he keeps me motivated and stuff. And he's always, you know, hey man, you, you gotta watch out for those 90 to mile hour sliders, man. Like, you know, just give me bits and pieces of advice here and there. And, you know, it's just it's good stuff. But where I train right now with my speed and agility coach is a uh, more geared towards NFL and combine guys. And working out with uh, some NFL players, it, you know, just getting in there and doing the same agility drills as them and the same speed and everything. And they're just they're just blown away by it and motivated. And, you know, working out with guys like Carson Palmer and Russell Wilson and. Uh, 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 some of the the Chargers guys too. Some of the guys from the Dolphins. Like it's just, it's awesome that when they come up to me and say, "Hey, thanks, man!" Like seeing out here, just killing it. It's it's motivating to us, man. And you know, then they stop complaining about like, "Oh man, my quads tight today." Like I don't think I'm gonna work out, but you know, I'm out there doing box jumps and deadlifting 415, and they're like, "Holy cow, dude, this guy can do it!" I'm gonna shut my mouth and I need to get out there and do it. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I work with a gentleman who's a, who's a major in the uh, in the army, and um, it's the same thing. Yeah. You know, you know, you, you talk about your bumps and bruises and stuff like that, and you know, to think about how he's had to carry a pack in 135 degree heat, you know, in full BDU uniform and stuff, and it, it's crazy. You know, um, I have much love and respect for our military. I know I grew up an army brat. Um, you know, and there's definitely, you know, family lines there, um, go army, but you know what? Bottom line is we're all on the same team, you know, whether you're Navy, Marines, Air Force, and, uh, your story, like, like, uh, Judah was saying, it's so inspiring and, um, you know, it's, it's an honor to have you on the show today. Well, thank you. I mean, it's, it's really an honor. And I, I mean, every time I... I get, I get the opportunity to tell my story. I just hope that it inspires one or two people. And, 
I mean, even if it's just reaching out to that one person who might need to hear it and get that little bit of motivation, like it's, it's, it's a true blessing to me and, you know, to, to all of us really, because I get out there and, you know, mentoring a, a new amputee, you know, who's involved in a motorcycle accident or, you know, vehicle rollover or something, or even meningitis or something like it's, just mentoring them motivates me to do better and tell them like, Oh, Hey man, I just ran five miles on Sunday, you know, or I'm going to go do the Detroit half marathon again this year, you know, and just give them inspiration and inspires me as well. So I want to say thank you guys for that. So a couple more questions. So normally I ask, um, what, um, what, um, advice would you give to a young baseball player but i'm going to change it up with you a little bit i'm going to say what advice would you just give anybody you know somebody coming up you know you're seeing a kid you know having a difficult time you know what's what's your advice what's some advice that you would give um a lot of my advice is um just to forget about what happened in the past you know if you go over for the previous day just forget about it today's in the game get out there forget about it and just think okay well what is this pitcher throwing what did he throw you know the previous people in the lineup okay did he start off with a fastball or did he end on a curveball you know three pitches in did he throw you a slider you know what was the count when he threw that slider so you know stop thinking about your batting average stop thinking about going over for the previous day because i went over two on saturday i got rang up on a hanging curveball in the outside corner again okay, well, now I can take that to my hitting coaches and I know what to do. So, But forget about it. Think about Saturday and my next game Saturday. Okay, well, guess what? Thursday's batting practice, 5 p.m. So you just got to forget about the, the past and look forward to the future. And always train in small increments, too. You know, not just, okay, well, I'm going to go into the gym. I just benched 300 today, so next week I'm going to do 415. You know, just train slowly, build yourself, keep telling yourself that you're going to keep telling yourself that you're going to be the best and just get out there and do it. But also the key factor is work together as a team and know your people. And that's, that's my advice. That's pretty good advice. So one last question and, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's imagine this here a little bit. So you get, you get, you sign a contract with the Cleveland Indians and uh, your very first at bat, I don't care, pick a stadium, um, but your very first at bat, what is your walk up song? Um, I would have to say Still Swinging by um, nice. uh, Papa Roach. Yeah. Like that one. I, back. I, I like that. I, I've been thinking about that for a while, and I think that's my my walk up because after everything, a decade of you know being out of the figuratively, you know, being out of the game, I think I think that's it. Wow, that, that's awesome. That, that's pretty good. So once again, I have Daniel Doc Jacobs. Uh, Doc, it was awesome chatting with you. Let's do this again. What's up, sir? I said, let's go ahead and do this again. Let's have you on the show again sometime. Yeah, absolutely. You know, six absolutely. months down I'm the road. All about it, and thank you. You're welcome. And, you know, once again, thank you very much absolutely, for your yeah. service. And, uh, you know, I, I don't say this very often, but I'm going to give out a Go Navy. <laughs> and so, being an <laughs> Army brat, I'm going to give out a Go Navy. Um, my good buddy, Rob Nepper. That. Rob Nepper, trainer to the stars, you know, he's a, he's a Navy veteran as well. We were talking about this yesterday, about having you on the show. And, uh, Rob, if you're listening, that's the only time you're going to get it, man. So, once again, Doc Jacobs. Doc, thank you for coming on, and uh, we'll chat with you again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Man, what an, what an inspiration, you know? I mean, you know, to overcome with what um, – He's had to overcome. Yeah, and, you know, we all have challenges, right, on a daily basis, little things that we consider, you know, bumps in the road that get in the way of our day. And it doesn't even have to be sports-related or job-related. It could be relational. It can be professional, but just the mental approach that he takes to not only baseball but to live life, man, yeah. it's inspiring stuff, and that's something we can all relate to. So once again, Mr. Judah Newby, 750 The Game, 
um, co-hosting with me today. Yeah. And uh, man, it's awesome to have you. It's awesome to be here, man. I I've always wondered where you guys uh, ripped this sucker out. This is this is beautiful. This is heaven right here. To me. So I follow. I so the story with Judah is is I first came across Judah as a seven eight year old. Uh, baseball player two foot eight two foot eight in the McMinnville Parks and Rec yeah. um, baseball league and I umpired some of his games as Judah grew up Judah started working for us about probably about 14 15 years old yeah I yeah. think yeah right around and so there, we actually sure. I think did we ever umpire any games together I don't we, remember I don't remember I always think I was doing the upper leagues and, yeah. <laughs> and I was, so, yeah I was coming in the farm system of umpiring but so do you have any do you have any stories of oh. of me umpiring games do you uh, what, too, what do you remember no i'm too many to count too many to count first of all i always remembered that um i wanted norm to be the umpire for our games and this is going back like i started in park and rec in mcminnville uh, going back to coach pitch at joe dancer park is the venue um, my house is you know maybe a f- five minute drive if that from there i still jog through that area all the time and uh, I, I look at the baseball fields, and all the memories start coming back. Uh, a, a buddy of mine, I still keep in touch with him now, his name's Ethan Doherty. <laughs> and uh, Ethan um, played a little bit of baseball at Lynn Benton, and he just got back playing baseball in Australia, and he's uh, he's going to Oregon State now, not playing ball anymore. But Ethan's dad, Patrick, <laughs> he had he had quite the voice about him. I tossed him. And you tossed him. I remember I that. Him. And my dad, my dad, Matt, he always tells the story of like, you know that time when Norm tossed Patrick out of the game? It's because I kept on egging Norm on, or egging Patrick on. I was like, yeah, keep yelling at him, Patrick, keep yelling. <laughs> so when you toss Patrick out, is because my dad was still like egging on Patrick, so that type of thing I remember all the time. But I always remember. I mean, you you were you fit the umpiring role perfectly, and I looked back there and I was like, Norm, this guy he knows what he's talking about. I'm not going to get cheated on any pitches here. And I still I even pitched a little bit in little, little league. Bit. I always looked forward to you behind the plate. No you know, it's always about it. being fair. You know, I mean, yeah. I I was consistent. I was either consistently good or consistently bad. <laughs> and so, but I was fair. Yeah. Oh, you no know, doubt. and. I, you know, I loved doing what I did. And, you know, 20 years later, I'm still with the Parks and Rec. Yes. I am now, every once in a while, I'll get out and umpire a game. But I supervise the umpires now, and then I, I coach coaches. And so a coach that's close to you, Brad Helgerson. Oh, yeah. I'm blowing the dust off of him. So I'm coming back in 2016 to coach my 7-year-old nephew. And so, I, cool. so it's going to be Tim Bucknell. Yeah. From the Sheridan Wilmine area. Oh yeah. Myself and I ran into Brad. Um Brad has been battling cancer and he having has. a tough go and um I'm bringing Brad on as an assistant coach and <sighs> I cannot wait to coach with that man. Yeah, that means you know? a lot to me. I please let me know when you guys are getting going cuz I'd love to come watch and uh say hi to Mr. Helgerson again, coach Helgerson. He was fun. He coached me from coach pitch all the way through uh, through sixth grade, and uh, his son Cody was really close with me growing up too. I'm sure you remember all of us when oh, we yeah. were little. So th- I mean, I would love to uh, get in touch with Brad again, and um, been praying for him for a while. And it's really cool that he's that he's coming out the other side with this. Yeah, it was fun times, you know. Um Man, the times are different now. You yeah, know, I remember, like, so in seventh and eighth grade, that's the cutoff date when in Park and Rec where you got to decide if you're going to still play Park and Rec or if you're going to play travel ball. I don't know how it is anymore, um, but all my buddies ended up playing travel ball, and I stuck through Park and Rec for seventh and eighth grade right. in the Max League, and that was that was a little bit of a trial because like all my closest friends were playing travel ball, but uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I mean, yeah. every time I visit Joe Dancer Park, I mean that baseball is one of those sports where it's like your initial connection to the game is so important right and um joe dancer represented that for me and and my fair umpire is like norm and then umpiring later on in life too you know every so so baseball this year um took a whole new meaning to me Mm -hmm. um you know with my dad passing away in march it was a healing process and for me to get out and uh drag fields 6 30 7 o'clock on a saturday morning you know, I'd pop in uh, the i the uh, iTunes and I'd be cruising, you know, dragging fields and, yeah. you know, you got the dust and then you're just reminiscing, you know, 20 years ago about when Little Judah was playing and different <laughs> people and, 
And um, yeah, it was awesome. It was 20 years I've been down there, and this year was the best year that I've ever had. Well, can I say first of all, Norm, I, I'm sorry to hear that about your father, and my condolences on on your loss. I, that can be a difficult difficult year to go through. I can only yep. imagine. Um, it's neat to have something like baseball to connect it with, though, and to, oh, to kind of process that as you're saying. And can I also say, it is imperative and incredibly important for the youth today. And especially when I was growing up, too, to have people like you involved in the community, especially in the Little League community. And because how many stories do we hear, unfortunately, now on a national scale of either corruption or just, you know, shadiness happening at a Little League level? Yeah. It's unreal. And not only do we need good examples, but just an exemplified operation of how Little League is supposed to be run. And, uh,. McMinnville Park and Rec always did a great job of that, and I always associate that with you and Steve and Jay and uh, Dan. Um, all those guys have meant meant so much, and I'm so excited to pass it down to my kids. You know, when that time comes, with Little League Baseball being that I'm probably important. will still be around. You know? <laughs> that's the, that's the beautiful thing, man. It's a beautiful thing. So thank you for that. Hey, not a problem. And I don't plan on hanging it up anytime soon. There you, you know, go. I want to hit. I want to hit that 40 year mark. And you can count on me. I'll be the parent in the back, still yelling at you and giving you all sorts of problems. <laughs> that's. Fun. <laughs> so once again, Mr. Judah Newby from 750 The Game, he will be sitting in on, um, we're going to be having uh, Danny Peterson on. We were talking about the corruption with the Little League. He's from um, Mid-Valley Baseball up in Woodburn, and they just had a deal to where their treasurer embezzled 8000 bucks. And so Danny's going to come on and talk to us a little bit about it and on how we can help him. And so Danny's a McMinnville guy. And so we will be back. So I'm Norm. That's Brian. We are sponsored by Baseballism.com. Check them out. They got some great stuff. Uh, Baseballdudes.com. To be the best, you must train like the best. Chris Gazelle up there in Vancouver, Washington. And we got Base by Pros, sports education. Mitch Canham, former Beaver, also up Much there love. in Washington. And his dad, Mark Canham, MDM Designs. Hey, we have a new logo for the show. And so starting next month, we are going to be producing T-shirts, sweatshirts, and whatever. And so, um, you know, shoot me a, a message, email, whatever, and we'll get your orders in. Um, they're going to be cheap. Yes. And so um, if you'd like to sponsor the show, hit me up, normbro18 at gmail.com. And every week we are on yamhilltoday.com we stream live and you can follow us on twitter clubhouse chatter 1t we're on facebook we're on youtube and we're also on itunes i'm norm this is judah that is brian we'll be back in about 10 minutes thank you